Another area, a lot of uh, interest is happening at this time is how to monitor patients, the response to treatment. This is important because we are getting more effective therapy. More patients are going into complete remission. Generally, when we say complete remission, the traditional criteria is that there is no monoclonal spike in the serum protein electrophoresis. We cannot even find the band by immunofixation. Then we say the patient has achieved complete remission. Then we look at the uh, free light chain, especially kappa lambda ratio. If the free light chain was originally elevated, now the kappa lambda ratio is back to normal range. Now we add that and say the patient has achieved stringent complete remission. So this is easy uh, to implement even in community practice. Now we are looking at um, whether we can go to the next level because even after defining this kind of complete remission, we know vast majority of myeloma patients do relapse. So multiple myeloma is like an iceberg. So we know when the tip disappears, now the iceberg is below, but we do not know how much lower it has gone. Whether the amount of tumors left in the patient is uh, 1 billion, 10 to the 9, or it is 10 to the 8, or it is down to 10 to the 6, or even less than 10 to the 6. So we, we are looking at several new methodologies. One of them is by using flow cytometry, which has been reported by the Spanish group to be very effective. So they are using multiple uh, antigens by color, five color, seven color, even up to 10 color flow cytometry to detect minimum residual disease. And if by that definition in the bone marrow, you cannot detect any tumor cells at all, then you can say the patient is now in complete remission by flow cytometry. Then people are using genetic method to look for the gene signature for the myeloma patient, whether they have achieved molecular complete remission. So the molecular complete remission is also another method. Now, let me say my personal take. I feel like defining complete remission by flow cytometry, seven color flow cytometry are even better, or using molecular complete remission. These are important as clinical research tool as we introduce more effective therapy, whether we are achieving molecular complete remission, but the results are not quite there to tailor the therapy, when to stop therapy, et cetera, by these methodology. So it need not be pursued in a day-to-day -day practice of managing a patient with multiple myeloma. The second is there is a limitation. When we do bone marrows, we all know from the extensive use of PET, CT, and MRI that multiple myeloma is sometimes distributed in pockets and not necessarily uniformly distributed. So a patient could be in complete remission by stringent blood test methods, but it, he could also be in complete remission by bone marrow, but there could be a focal lesion detected by MRI or PET CT in a particular spine or a rib. And if you put the needle, if you do fine needle aspiration biopsy, you may still detect that there is some residual tumor there. So even if the patient is in molecular complete remission or flow cytometry complete remission, but the MRI or PET CT showed some focal lesion, that patient is not in true complete remission and studies show that it predicts for earlier relapse. So myeloma is a challenge in this regard in saying who's in complete remission. So we have to incorporate imaging methods also when we say a particular patient is in a complete uh, remission. So that's my personal reason why I don't just go, go to the extent of doing all the molecular complete remission and flow cytometry, et cetera, in a day-to-day -day practice.